So I'd like to share an idea with you. The idea that everything we think we control is an illusion. That what we think we control, we influence, and that influence directly impacts the quality of our life. Now, in my work as a therapist, I often come in contact with people who are frustrated or discontent with their circumstances. Uh, they're going through things that are, in, are incredibly difficult. Unfortunately, by the time they reach my office, oftentimes they're angry to the point that they've lost control. They're hopeless to the point that they don't feel that they can go on. And they're anxious to the point that's debilitating. Now, as I, I sit and hear people's stories and, and I listen to the things that, that they're going through, I couldn't help but, but think, there's got to be a way to prevent this. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Now, um, let's visualize for a second that we all live within a circle. The circle goes everywhere with us. Um, it's with us at all times. Now, the circle... It, it is unique to us, for sure, but it functions the same for everyone. And that is that everything within your circle, you have 100% control over. And everything outside of your circle, you have zero control over. It seems simple enough. Now, I want you to take just a moment and begin to think of some things that you feel may be in your circle. Some things that are in your life that you feel like you may have control over. Now, some of these examples may have popped into your head, maybe not, but these are some common things that, that people uh, will say to me as I sit with them. Now, I want to ask you a few questions about some of these. Let's take money for an example. Let's say you're someone who you're on top of things. You do things well. You plan well. So what you've done is you've taken all of your extra money, and you've put it in things like a 401k. You've put it into investments. It seems like a great idea. Now, I want to ask, is it possible that even though you've done things well, even though you've done things right, that something could happen within the stock market or within that investment account, and a portion or all of that money is gone? Well, of course, that happens all the time. So let's look at time for a second. So let's say that you're someone who, you're, you're incredibly punctual. You, uh, you think being on time is very important, and you plan accordingly. So, is it possible that despite all of your great planning, despite doing things so well, that on your way to, to your job or wherever your destination is, that there's construction that you didn't know about? Maybe there's a fender bender on the, on the highway, or uh, maybe there's even some sort of spill that causes traffic to get clogged. Well, of course. Well, then let's look at relationships. So let's say that you're someone who, theoretically, you do relationships incredibly well. You are intentional with your time. You are empathic. You're an excellent listener. You do everything that textbook tells you you are great at relationships. Now, is it possible that despite doing all of those things well, the person at the other side of the relationship still decides that they don't want to be a part of it? Well, sure, that also happens. So as we begin to ask just a few questions to kind of probe into here, we see that these things that we thought we had control over are outside of our circle. We, in fact, don't have control over them. Now, I've, I've painted you a pretty bleak picture here. And so I do want to give you a, a ray of hope in that there are things in our lives that we have control over. And when we boil those things down, I think that we end up with two things. And that is attitude and behavior. Attitude is simply the way that we are looking at things. It's the lens that we, we see the world through. Um, it's the way that we, we look and interpret information. Now, behavior is simply the way that we behave towards things. Now, the interesting thing about these two concepts is that they always run together. 
you can't really separate them. Because the way that we view a situation directly impacts the way that we behave towards it. So if I'm looking at something and I'm viewing it in a positive way, then chances are I'm going to behave in a positive way. If I'm looking at something and I'm viewing it in a negative way, chances are I'm going to view it and behave in a negative way. Now, I think that with this, this circle, with understanding what we control and or what we have control over and what we don't have control, I think we still have a problem. And that is, as people, as human beings, we get two concepts mixed up. The concepts of influence and control. You see, I have the ability to influence those things outside my circle by the way I'm viewing a situation and the way I'm behaving towards it. But I don't have the ability to control it. Now, I can influence those things both positively and negatively. Again, by the way I'm viewing it and the way I'm behaving towards it. Now, I want to share with you a quick story. I once had a young woman in my office. Um, she had come to see me following, um, following a divorce. Um, her relationship to uh, her husband had just kind of dissolved. And um, quite frankly, she was in a, a pretty abusive relationship. Now, I remember her coming into my office. I remember sitting with her um, as she was terrified. She had no idea what she was going to do. She had looked at her life in the direction that she thought it was going to go, and all of that had come to a stop. I remember her um, telling me about her uncontrollable panic attacks. I remember her telling me, again, how terrified she was of her future. I remember her explaining to me how she felt like she was damaged. And I also remember the incredible guilt that she carried with her from this relationship that she had worked very hard to maintain. I also remember her finding hope. And I want to come back to that, but I want to explain to you guys a little bit further about how this circle works. Now, there's something I didn't tell you about this circle, and that's that it has a door in it. Now, this door is very unique because it only opens from the inside, which means any transaction inside or outside this circle comes from us. Anytime the door's open, it's by our doing. Anytime something goes out or something comes in, it's our decision. Now, we are all human beings who really like the idea of control. I want to know step by step how things are going to happen. I want to know the outcomes of all of those things outside my circle. So what I tend to do, and all of us do, is that we reach out to those things that we don't have control over, and we bring them inside of our circle. Now, there's something else I didn't tell you about this circle. And that is that there's only so much room in it. So when we bring something in, something has to go out. So we've reached out and we've brought something like our relationship into our circle, which means our attitude and our behavior are now outside the circle. Now, from what we know of the circle, everything inside we have control over, everything outside we have no control over. So now we've shifted our attitude and our behavior outside and we've lost control. We've lost our ability to look at things and behave in a way that is productive for us. Now when we do this, when this exchange happens, I think we experience three things. Anger, hopelessness, and anxiety. Let's think about this. 
Have you ever tried to control something that's outside of your control? (laughs) Yes. It's horribly frustrating. Now, we tend to get really angry. Then once that anger subsides, we get hopeless. We start to ask ourselves questions like, am I always going to feel like this? Is it always going to be like this? Is my circumstance ever going to change? Then we get anxious. We get worried about our future. We begin to ask ourselves similar questions. Is this pain that I'm experiencing always going to be there? Now, based on Again, the circle and the way that we know it interacts, we really have to pose a question here of what do we do? It's kind of the million dollar question. Because we know that we don't want to experience those three things in our life. So here's the solution is that when we move something in, something goes out that everything inside we have control over, everything outside we have zero control over. So we have to move our attitude and our behavior back into our circle. We have to look at the things that we can control in life. We have to look at those things outside of our circle and we have to say, how am I viewing this? And in turn, how am I behaving towards it? Now, Even though we have the solution, that doesn't really mean it's over. Because, again, we're all human beings who make mistakes. So the key here is to not do this perfectly or be the perfect person. The key here is to say, if I'm experiencing these three things or any combination of them, what am I trying to control that's outside of my control? How do I shift the way that I'm viewing things? How do I change my perspective in a situation? And that's what alleviates those three things. Now, I want to come back to the young woman that um, I spoke about a while ago. Now, the great thing about the story that um, I shared before is that it's not the end of her story. I also remember her sitting in my office And us going through this and her beginning to grasp the idea that the things that happened within her relationship, the guilt that she carried was out of her control. That she could work very hard in this relationship to influence it, but that she didn't have control over the outcome. And because of that, in her own words, she experienced freedom. Now, if I'm being really honest, this isn't just something that I walk through with my clients. This is something that I use in my own life all the time. Because I too get frustrated. I too get hopeless. And I too get anxious about the future. Just like all of us. And so I do the same thing in that I have to shift my mind in any circumstance to say, what am I trying to control that's outside of my control? How can I change the way that I'm viewing this situation and behaving towards it? Now, I want to bring you back to the circle that you thought of. And I want you to think about some of the things that popped into your head. And I want to ask you to look at this in the same way. And I want you to ask yourself, What's in my circle that shouldn't be there? What am I trying to control? What am I reaching out and grabbing? Instead of focusing 100% of my time and my energy and everything that I have to looking at how am I viewing a situation and how am I behaving towards it? Thank you.